Hey y'all, I'm James Wright, and welcome to the Frozen Otter 2020. Oh yes, it is 5 a.m. and we're about to get going. I am all set. I'm waiting for my ride. It's going to be picking up me up here a bit. So I've got my, my pack here. Uh, it's about 16 pounds or so wet. Um, actually, it's a little bit less. It's about 14 pounds wet. Got my drop bag ready to go. And we are going to be driving up there to the start and getting ready to do this. So 100 kilometers through the snow. We have about four inches of freshly fallen snow. Uh, it will probably be snowing for the first few hours of the race itself. So this is going to be kind of interesting. It won't be very cold. Uh, it'll be like uh, really low 30s to start with, but then going down to about 8 degrees at night. So it should be a really good race. Let's dive in. And we've made it to the start. And so we are here at the park and it is snowing absolutely gorgeous. This is going to be, the first few hours are going to be in snow like this. So I'm really getting excited about this. So the first thing we need to do is check in and do gear check. So I just finished with the gear check and I'm gonna show you what that is all about. So there's a shelter here, but it's got closed doors for the winter. So we just come on in here. There's a nice fire and a bit of warmth. Gear check. Packet pickup, and of course, the fire. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna be missing this. Just dropped off the uh, the drop bags, and those are back by the entrance, which we drove by on the way in. So we're gonna walk back to that, and we're gonna walk back. So it's gonna add an extra half mile or so to our day, but that's a good thing, right? Greg here is the one who I ran the uh, the kettle 50k with with Ethan, and uh, he's gonna blow me away on this one. This guy has put on speed like nothing this last year, so he's gonna be playing catch up today. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, but isn't this absolutely gorgeous? Until the wind kicks up, it's gonna start dumping this on our heads. Into the breach once more. is starting to pick up so this is gonna be interesting I'm gonna try and uh, keep a little bit of a jog for the first while at least for the first check off and we're gonna have some fun so probably gonna check in every couple miles or so or maybe every checkpoint we'll see this is absolutely gorgeous let's go have some fun So, yeah, about five and a half miles in, everything's clicking and feeling good. Trails are absolutely perfect. This is just fantastic. They're knocked down so you can walk easily on them and everything is, is really clicking. You can see here, we're just following a path like this. 
someone in the front has been knocking all this down for us. And this is going pretty well for those of us back here. But oh, this beauty is just incredible. Really, really having a good time. So, got another three miles or so to the next checkpoint. And then we keep going. Aid station number one. Aid station number one. Ooh, we have ramen and we have fire. So long, campfire. Back to the trail we go. Oh. That was good ramen. Now we can head back out. Hey, I'm on my own. I can actually pick up a pace now. I was stuck with a, uh, a train doing like a 17 and a half minute mile. And so now I can actually do something I want to do. So let's go have some fun. See you in a while. Tornado Alley. All these trees blown down. Station number two. I don't want to be so check this out. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fire, <laughs> food, good people to hang out with. We're about 16-ish uh, miles in. Feeling really good. Hitting a few minor niggles in the legs and whatnot, but um, feeling really good. So, gonna keep clicking. I think it's what eight-ish more miles to the next aid station, which is the turnaround point. Then we go back and do everything we just did in reverse. Hey. And then, if I want to beat myself up, I can go another nine miles south. So let's refuel, eat up a little bit, probably some more ramen noodles, and get back out on the trail. Good, how are you? sun has just gone down and I'm coming up on the turnaround here getting excited because this is 24 miles ish 23 miles ish and I am happy currently feeling better than I've ever felt before at this distance yeah cowbell ah oh, this is so pretty woot woot ah oh, there's fire Ah, uh, one, two, three. Fire! <laughs> okay, balaclava going on. Had a sausage from the tent. Uh, I'm gonna grab a little bit more food before going out, but it's time to throw on mittens and uh, the headlamp and all sorts of things and head back. So about a third of the way done. And now we can go do it again and then again. So yeah. Um, I'm feeling far better than I've ever felt before at this distance, so I'm going slower than I've ever gone at this distance before, but I'm doing really well. So we'll keep trudging. Um, from this point on, I'm not going to be doing as much showing what's going on because it's in the dark. 
Um, so it's going to be more of me just talking at aid stations and occasionally when I think of something cool. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm having a good time. Really looking forward to the rest of this. So I got the headlight on, balaclava ready, and head back out. We're going to spend about the next hour or so warming back up. It's one of the problems with the aid stations. You stop moving, your body stops producing heat, and it just takes forever to get warmed up. But I have mittens this time, so I should be able to stay warm. Let's, uh, let's go grind another what, eight, nine miles back to the last aid station we're just at. It just left Greenbush aid station. Wow, is that cold. And now I'm feeling good again. So, 30 miles in, and I am trashed right now, but feeling good just going up this uphill. So, um, yeah, whoo, just taking it a step at a time. Gotta get to Butler next, and then we'll see where we go from there. Part of me is thinking, I'm going to stop at 46 miles Maui Lake and call it a day. So we'll see how it goes from there. But holy cow, it has gotten really cold really fast. I now have on two shirts and two coats and then a poncho. And then two pairs of pants, a pair of shorts, a pair of gloves, a pair of small mittens, a pair of big mittens, my balaclava and earmuffs. Yeah, so we're going. I'll see you at the next aid station. Okay. It's now close to midnight. Uh, I just got back to Butler Lake, which is 38 miles. I'm feeling really, really good. Just, uh, I need to get into some dry socks here, but I don't have those until I get back to Maud Lake, where I have my, uh, my drop box. So, I'm gonna make the final decision when I get back there on whether or not to keep on going, but I'm thinking I'm gonna right now. So feeling really good. Just, man is it cold. It's gotten down to about six degrees. Wind gusts over 40. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's all a mental game. So, yeah, let's keep trudging. Woo! Just passed through the Mothy Lake Trek Point and I made a decision to go on. So it means 19 miles and unfortunately there's only about 12 other people who made the decision to go on and the trails are a total mess. So my pace has gone down to about a 25, 26 minute mile because it's just a trudge through the snow. I wish I could show you. So I've got 18 miles of this up and down the Kettle Moraine. Woohoo! Let's keep going. Nine miles of post hauling. Almost made it to the next aid station. It's taken me almost four and a half hours. I don't think I have the ability to make it back. I've fallen asleep while walking twice. I'm out of food. My legs are dead. And I have about four hours to make it back. Um, yeah, so we're going to get there and assess exactly how I feel 
and what's up and make the decision. Oh, wow, am I in pain. And I am alive. Oh, wow. I, I was intending to do a recap video when I got to the end and, and talk through everything, but yeah, I was I was totally trashed. About the last three miles or so, um, I couldn't keep food down. I was falling asleep while walking from side to side. I, at one point, I was doing like a 40-minute mile. Uh, just I couldn't I couldn't go on. Um, and as much as I wanted to, when I got to the last aid station, I had a little less than four hours, and it took me a little over four hours to get there. So I wasn't going to be able to make it back in time. So I had to call the uh, call it quits, which I not a problem because only six people out of the 125 actually made the whole distance. So only six people reached that and turned around and went back. Um, so I, I will take that as a great accomplishment, but that means I've got to go back next year to get those dog tags. So what a, a crazy year! I've done I've done a ton of different ultras and, and all different conditions, and nothing was quite like this. It was just off the bat, everything was great, everything was amazing. The, the snow it was one of the most beautiful races I've ever been on, and as it got cold, everything became good. And I was, I was very, very happy with where I was when we got back to Mothy Lake. I was feeling good. The trails had been, had been fairly good. Uh, a lot of people have been complaining about sliding off one's weight and the other because, you know, the trail was only about 14 inches wide. It was packed down. And if your foot touched the edge, it would slide off into the, the gully on either side. Uh, and so it was a very, uh, you had to be very careful of every footfall, um, you know, 100,000 footfalls. You had to check every one of them. And so I got back to Mothy Lake and I was feeling really good and we took off on that last nine miles down and having so few people making that trek meant that it was, there was no trail. Um, and there were several places where everyone suddenly went off course and then had to backtrack to find the right trail. Uh, it was, uh, it was a, a total mess. Um, but so memorable and such a great experience. So I'm really looking forward to going back. Um, I, I have, I've never been that beat down on a race before. That was incredible, um, especially with being so good at 46 miles. Everything felt amazing there, and I was ready to take on the world. I had, I had eight hours. I had like eight and a half hours, actually, to go all the way down and back. Eight and a half hours to cover a little over 18 miles. Not bad. Not a problem at all. But yes, it was. <laughs> so if this is something you want to take on, realize this is all in the planning and all in your mind. When you get out there, it is going to be a trudge. It is going to be a total mental game. So get ready for it and have a little bit of fun. So thanks for coming on the adventure with me. This was one for the record books and one I'll be looking forward to going back to next time. And until next time, keep on postholing.